Easy people, welcome back to my channel at Big Steve MCFC. It's Monday morning. Manchester City have won the derby. Manchester United nil. Manchester City free. The roof's still leaking, I can confirm. The place is still a shithole. It's Disneyland without any tourists. No, how, how can I word that? It's Disneyland without any attractions. Do you know what I mean? There was a time where they'd like to go to Old Trafford and watch these great players and that. But I tell you what, that yesterday, from top to bottom, was a shit show. The champions of Europe, Manchester City came to town, wiped the floor with them. People was actually calling it Bernardo Silva's garden party. So it was like Bernardo just having a kick about in his back garden. You know what I mean? We came, we conquered. Manchester is blue. We know that anyway. But all these Reds that were getting confident and cocky on the internet this week, telling us what they were going to do to us. And we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And you're finished. And Haaland's this and Haaland can't do that. Well, you need to apologise. Because you did shit. You did nothing. Nothing at all. You got absolutely dominated on your own turf. The word is dominated. We played with you. It was like a lion playing with a mouse in a cave, just flicking a mouse about. We didn't even have to go out a second gear, you know what I mean, to, to beat you. But what a fantastic day. The away end yesterday was absolutely unbelievable. Um, got to Old Trafford early doors. Uh, I was working for Man City yesterday, doing match day live with FG. Big shout out to FG. We had, we had a ball yesterday. Um, got into the media zone early doors. Um, you sort of soak the atmosphere up in there because you, you're you getting ready to do a little bit of work and that walked out to the pitch. Obviously, Old Trafford, I've only ever been in the away end. I've never, ever been anywhere else. Never had any intention of going anywhere else. Um, we came out through the, um, the director's lounge onto the pitch and, um, yeah, it gets the art going a little bit. You know what I mean? I'm on the pitch. I'm looking at the away end. I'm on the pitch at Old Trafford, you know what I mean? I'm like, wow, this is unbelievable. And then I remembered I've got a job to do. Um, so we ended up going live for the team announcement. Me and FG, um, we spoke about the teams and that. And once we seen the lineup, uh, both me and FG were, were, were really confident. When we seen that lineup, I thought, yeah. And then I looked at their lineup and I thought, we're going to dominate these. We're going to dominate these. Death by a thousand passes, I said last week on the Derby Day preview with Saeed. And that's what it was. Um, I looked at their team and I just couldn't see, other than maybe Marcus Rashford catching us on the counter-attack, I couldn't see where a goal was coming from for them. I just couldn't see it. You know what I mean? Um, they keep telling us about how good this Hoyland is. Okay, he's had a couple of good layoffs in a few games. He's not scored in seven. But don't come for Harman. Don't come for, for, for Haaland criticising Erling when you've got someone like that up front who's not hit the back of the net in seven games. Someone said, yeah, but he's a leading scorer in the Champions League. I'm like, mate, you're going out the Champions League. Who gives a fuck? You know what I mean? But listen, they're clinging on to the deludedness them lot there. The, the, honestly, when I tell you the stadium's a shithole, I mean it. That's not me trolling. I mean it. The media lounge, tiny. You know what I mean? Fucking everyone fighting over plug sockets around the pitch and all that. The place is prehistoric. And at the end of the day, fucking good. Good. You know what I mean? Good. And the, the game started. City never looked worried. The only chances United had was when Jack Grealish and Phil Foden decided they wanted to make a game of it and passed it back and nearly put them in one-on-one. -on -one. Other than that, they didn't create nothing. They're all saying the penalty want a penalty. The penalty is a penalty, mate. If you're getting decisions like you got last year at Old Trafford, don't be coming moaning at us about decisions, mate. He got pulled down in the box. If he wants to grab all the Rodri in the box, that's fine. We should have had another penalty in the second half, in my opinion, when uh, Slabhead had all the Maguire, uh, Slabhead had all the Ireland in the box. So just let me have a bit of this old brew here. So if anyone wants to talk about uh, decisions, then I think they got away with it. But once City started to turn the screw, and pass that ball about. There was no way they were going to score. No way they were going to score. First goal, Rodgers pulled down in the box. My mate who said to me, Pete, he said to me, penalty straight away. He said, they're going to pull it back. Anyway, they pulled it back. 
penalty. Erling steps up. The Stratford end singing Kino. There's only one Kino. Imagine, yeah, imagine singing Kino and his son comes and just smashes you up like he did yesterday. And you're not embarrassed or ashamed. It's bad enough from singing them songs about kicking a blue. Well, I've been going for 30 years and none, none of them dibs have ever kicked me. I don't know any blue that's ever been kicked by a red. I don't know. Kicking a blue. You need to sort your heads out. Hatchets and spanners, Stanley Knives and something else they were singing. Chopping City fans up. What are you talking about, mate? I was at the side of the pitch, yeah? You had the pride of Indonesia on the pitch doing TikToks with a girl in a space suit, yeah? You had half of, of, of Surrey and Kensington on the front row all wanting to have the picture took with FG and Big Steve, right? The place is a shit show. It's a soulless bowl of shite, yeah? And at the end of the day, you can call me what you want. I don't give a shit. But at the end of the day, that there, if Manchester City ever get to that level, yeah? Tell me. Pre-warn me, because I won't be going. Because I won't want to be a part of that shit show that I seen yesterday. Yeah? Taking pictures of Erling Haaland warming up. Filming City fans doing the Poznan. Second, third goal goes in. Stadium empties. Tourist attraction. Not a Manchester derby. It's a tourist attraction. And you've got, you only got yourself to blame because everything you said you was, this big team, it's all come true. If that's what big teams are, I don't want it. If that's what big clubs become, I don't want it. I'm happy doing what we're doing. Because I tell you, the only soul and the only passion and the only Mancunian pride in that stadium yesterday came from the blue side of Manchester. Yeah, us. Our players wanted it more. The manager wanted it more. And our fans wanted it more. And I tell you what, yeah, you can't get a ticket. There was more City fans in them in that uh, home end than I've ever seen in my life. And walking past the touchline, they're going, Steve, and they're going, come on, City, and that. All in the United end. So you've got bigger problems to think about. And if Ten R gets... Uh, I hope he wins the next three games to keep his job. But I can't see it. I think he'll lose him and then end up getting carted. And I'm not being funny here, but you've got to get... There's only one man can save you off, in my opinion. Neil Warnock. Neil Warnock needs that Man United job. He's always wanted a big job. Give Warnock the job to the end of the season. I, he will keep you up. I swear to God, Neil Warnock will keep you up. <laughs> Sorry, I can't help myself. I can't help myself. But anyway, early scores the pen. It's 1-0. Cracking header, end of the first half. Head to anywhere in that, in that net other than where they edited it and it's in. Great save by Onana. They come out second half. City, um, again, early doors. Great cross by Bernardo. I've been saying it for weeks on this show. Cross the ball in the box. Loop them crosses into Erling. Let him have a clear run at them crosses. Nobody's beating him. Nobody's beating him. Have you seen how high he jumps? He jumped up. He got. He probably jumped a little bit early, in my opinion. He got the head off. Clean. Bang. 2-0. So you can stick your keen old chance up your ass, mate. Because that was embarrassing. Again, Big Earl's bagged a brace. Apparently he's on a drought. You know what I mean? He's leading scorer in the Prem. I think he's got 46 in 47 in the Prem. And apparently he's struggling. Yeah. All right, then. Well, that's you finished then at 2-0. It's party time. It was just... Champions, ole, ole, ole. Champions, ole, ole, ole. Champions again. Champions again. Champions again, ole, ole. City fans were mocking it. It's only 6-1. You know what I mean? Uh, what else was coming out? Mind the Gap, Man United. The old classics were coming out. We might as well just have had a karaoke sing-song in the away end. Do you know what I mean? But 2-0, he's never beating us. Never getting anywhere near us. Like you say, you brought Anthony on, like smacking his bird up, tried to smack Jeremy Doku up, ended up making himself look a knob. Jeremy was just like, Shh, calm down, mate, calm down. Definitely anger issues there over at the swamp, you know what I mean? You've got Sancho sat in the car park having a packed lunch because he's not allowed in the ground. So someone has to go and drop a packed lunch off to him in the car park because he's not allowed in there. He's your best winger, having an apple and a fruit shoot in the car park while you're getting drilled on your own pitch. You could have done with Sancho, to be honest. You know what I mean? <laughs> Fuck 
fucking fruit shoot in the car park. I tell you, fucking that's the only shooting that was going on there. The fruit shoots in the car park with Jaden. You know what I mean? But listen, 2-0 then it was party time. We knew we knew we'd won. We're just taking the piss. And then the last goal, um, the commentator when he said that Rodri clarted it was just unbelievable. And then the early, you know, I thought he was going to shoot to be fair, try and get his hat trick, and he puts it into Phil. Phil taps it in. Phil Foden yesterday, special mention, absolutely unstoppable. He was all over the park, proper Mancunian, Man City fan. You could feel it here. He wanted it. He was all over. Bernardo Silva, Bernardo Silva, what a player, what a man, what an energy he brought to the team. We mentioned it on Manchester City Live, how important Bernardo was in the energy. And, and I think he leads by example. When you see Bernardo all over, Everybody else, it just rubs off. The whole team yesterday, Guardiola, Ruben, Stones, Walks, Edison, Rodri, Alvarez as well, getting better and better every game. His first touch yesterday seemed to have improved. He was spraying it left to right. Brilliant, you know what I mean? Jack Grealish. Some people were getting on Jack's case. Oh, we need to start Doku. Jack Grealish this, Jack Grealish that. Yesterday is why... You've seen Jack Grealish plays in this team every week. Yesterday, the control, the keeping keeping the ball out wide, dragging players to him, opening up space, everything Jack Grealish has been brought in this team to do, he did yesterday. He was even cutting inside and shooting. At the end of the day, Jack Grealish, last two games, young boys, United away, has been fantastic. But all over the park, we were superior. We dominated them. They've got Onana in net. I believe he's a good goalkeeper, but he's got clowns in front of him. If you've got a goalkeeper that likes to play with his feet, but you've not got a centre-back or a full-back who can receive the ball in tight spaces and get out of it, then there's no point in having that kind of a goalkeeper. Every time Man United tried to play out from the back, within 10 seconds, Man City had the ball back. It either went out for a throw-in or we won the ball back because they panicked. Johnny Evans, 12 years ago to the day, got sent off in the derby and we won 6-1. 12 years ago to the day, Evans got sent off. 12 years later, the big club from Manchester, the world's biggest club, yeah, I've got him starting in a derby with Harry Maguire as centre-back against the best number nine in the world football. How do you think that was going to end? Are you that stupid? United fans, that you thought that, that you was going to get away with that shit. And I tell you what, other teams will follow the blueprint. They're going to look what City did to you. They're going to come to Old Trafford with no fear. And as uh, Drury said, you're going to get clarted a few times, I think. So uh, you better get used to it. But 3-0 Blues, fantastic win. The bragging rights are in, are in Manchester again. You know what? We all know that. The City fans don't have to go around telling everyone, you know, all year, what colour Manchester is. You only have to look at the last decade. Every time there's a big Manchester derby that means something, Man City win. Premier Leagues, Man City on top. Uh, FA Cups, we've won the Champions League, we've won the treble, we've done a Centurion season, we've done formidable season. All these things we've done, while they're still around, they've not stopped any of them. They've not even been involved in any of them. So, you know what I mean? Leave the big club over there Leave the big club over there. We're cool over here in the shadow. Rebuilding, winning trebles, uh, rebuilding the team, getting rid of older players, bringing in younger players. Look at the look at the team. Rico Lewis, um, Phil Foden, Erling Haaland, Jeremy Doku, Guardiol. We're freshening it up all across the park. Alvarez. The future's bright for Manchester City Football Club. We ain't hanging on to McTominay, Evans, Maguire, Amrabat, fucking Amrabat. Did you see when Grealish twisted him and nearly snapped his ankles off? Yeah, Amrabat, Casimiro, Varane, yeah? You've got no money to spend at United and you've got all them players they need to replace. How are you going to do that? There you go. Big problems, mate. Big problems. Let me have another bit of my brew here. I'm enjoying this. But listen, it was an absolute pleasure yesterday to work that game for Manchester City. For me as a fan of 30, 35 years more, 
to go Old Trafford every year, been beat a few times, been gutted a few times, win a few times, to go there and offer my opinion on City TV, work for the club that you love, is unbelievable. And to stand, I went in the away end, and to come out the away end with five minutes to go and stand on the pitch when the players were celebrating, it, it, it gave me goosebumps now. I've never, I'll never experience anything like it. Edison came over to me, give me a hug. Rico Lewis came and gave us a hug, me and FG. And then Pep's clapping the players. I'm looking to me right and I see the full city end, the full city end bouncing, bouncing. And I look to me left and I'm with the players. It was a mad feeling for me as a fan. It was a mad feeling. I was so happy. It was one of the best days of my life. And I'm like, I can't thank the club enough for... for Basically, having trust in a, in a fan that's I'm not media trained, I'm not got any background in media at all. I just came doing this because I was a supporter and people liked what I said about Man City, and it's led to it's led to this. On Saturday, I was on Sky on Saturday Social, um, good fun, combined elevens and that quizzes and all that. I'm not into them. I don't know anything about any other football club. I only know stuff about Man City. I don't know shit about Arsenal and Chelsea. I watch Man City week in, week out. I don't go home and then go and watch everyone else. I just watch Man City. But I'm enjoying it. And it's thanks to you people, all the fans that have always trusted me. If I ever got a feeling the fans thought I was a dickhead or a bellend, I won't, I won't do it. I, I won't do it. But the amount of people come up and go, Steve, you represent us well. You give it them reds. I don't back down from them. I'd have never backed down from them when we were shit. So I definitely ain't backing down from them now. Now we've got something to shout about. And that's why I encourage all you out there, all the kids, go in school and milk it. Go in work and milk it. Don't feel sorry for Dave. Dave, the, uh, the bucket at Dave, the bucket at Pat, who drives a forklift, who's been giving you shit for 20 years. Don't feel sorry for him. Now, go and give it him. Go and give it him because they deserve it. They all sort of drift off now. Oh, I don't like football anymore. Yeah, United are shit now. But they weren't saying that 20 years ago. They were in your face, making your life hell. So go and make their life hell. Do you know what I mean? 30,000 bucket hats. You thought it was yours and all that. City fans, I just urge every single one of you, go to college, give it them. Go to school, give it them. Go to work, give it them. Just give it them. Do you know what I mean? Give it them. They were trying to give it me yesterday. Some guy came down from the, the, the North Stand, or wherever it was, just to call me a bald bastard and uh, put one finger up to me. So I, all I did was give him the Balotelli wink. And he went, yeah, you fucking dickhead. I just went... Nice one. That's all That's all we needed to do. And anyway, he's gone home crying, probably got a kebab and that, fucking wounded. And uh, I went home and watched the match again and slept like a baby. Slept like an absolute baby. But overall, Blues, the performance was class. It was really refreshing to see. And it looks like we've turned a little bit of a corner. We've got Bournemouth coming up. We know what we've got to do. We've got to win against Bournemouth. We can't let the energy levels drop now. We've done this before. We don't want to be up and down all season. We need to go there, Bournemouth at home, South Stand, get it bouncing again. I'll be in there. Let's get it moving and let's get this win and get, get, get this ball rolling. We've got some tough fixtures coming up. Liverpool, Tottenham, Chelsea, you know, Aston Villa, all tough things. We've got to get going now as a team. We've all got to pull together again, in my opinion. But overall, Manchester City won the derby. Manchester is blue, 3-0. Big Earl, Phil Foden, the two Man City fans turned up, put United to bed. ta mate. The roof's still leaking, I can confirm. There was puddles on the story, we did see it. And all we've got to do now is focus on ourselves, yeah? Focus on our football. Don't be getting into these daft arguments about who's better, Doku and Grealish. Debate it all you want, but at the end of the day, they play for the same team. Pep's going to use Jeremy in some games. It's going to use Jack in some games. We've just got to be patient, do what we're doing. Um, but the squad's looking good. Johnny Stones was back again. Fantastic to have John back in the team. Massive part of what we do. And Rodri. God damn how we miss Rodri, I tell you. Unbelievable. Unbelievable how, uh, how much of a player he is for us. But listen, Blues, that was my little uh, derby um, reaction. Finally went to the hospital today. Nothing serious. I had a bit of a kidney infection. I've been hiding it for a few weeks, taking pills and trying to get through it. Yesterday, at the ground, it felt like someone had toe-bunged me right in the bollocks. And I was in pain all game, but I wasn't missing the game. Been hospital this morning. 
sorted me some tablets out. I'm having a week off. I'm going to relax. I'm going to recharge my batteries and I'm going to uh, be ready to go. But everyone that came up to me yesterday, I appreciate it. Everyone that I've seen around the ground who was nice, thank you. Everyone that was calling me a bell end, sit on that. And listen, Manchester City, Derby Day winners again. Old Trafford is falling down. Glazers staying 10 more years. Man City on the bears. Big Steve's having a brew. That's all I'm going to say. Come on, City.